Suparna Karmakar, you've been researching the World Trade Organization's role on a global scale. In light of the free trade talks going on at regional level, how are they impacting the WTO's role in operations at the moment? Some are of the view that the recent interest or renewed interest in bilaterals or this large regional agreements is a function of the ongoing Doha round or WTO talks going on for as long as it has. It has actually now been going on for 12 years, which is the longest WTO or GATT round till date. So there are expectations that these large regionals are going to help the WTO negotiations simply because they can infuse some amount of urgency, in particular sort of trying to shake up those that are left out of the regionals. So there is expectation that this might sort of boost the cause of WTO negotiations. On the other hand, there is a fair amount of skepticism that the bilaterals are going to uh, be concluded, number one, rapidly, or number two, there will be enough depth in it. And therefore, in the final outcome, it is not really certain whether if, if the people who are left out of these regionals factor this thing in that it might not work out as it is being proposed, then it may not really give that additional impetus for the round to conclude. And how are these trade talks impacting the emerging market? Bilaterals, in particular the transatlantic pact, is definitely going to have a major impact on uh, the emerging markets, if not the WTO so much. Because in the WTO or in, in global trade, these two, the US and EU, that is, they are already large trading partners, so between them, they cover something around 60 odd percent or even more uh, of global trade. Uh, EU alone is half of world trade. So um, if the two trading blocks have a pact amongst themselves, it definitely affects all WTO members and in turn has potential to impact the negotiations uh, or interactions with the other uh, WTO members. That said, the emerging markets are the growing uh, parts of world economy now. So how keeping them out, an agreement that sort of leaves their out or does not really take into account how they might react um, will have some amount of influence on how the global trade will pan out going forward or trade negotiations will pan out going forward. For example, it is not necessary that a regulatory agreement um, between US and EU will have as profound an impact on emerging markets changing their regulations, domestic regulations today as it would have happened maybe a decade ago. So because they are larger markets, they have now a much bigger say in how they want their domestic regulations to change in response to something that even two large trading partners have done. Things are changing. It's a very dynamic, fluid thing. So uh, it may not be so easy to uh, sort of make a very firm assessment of what might happen. But there will be some impact. Um, it is, I mean, I, it is not my position or I, at this moment I'm not able to sort of outline that this is how things might pan out. One has to wait and watch. The WTO has a ministerial meeting scheduled uh, in Bali this coming December. What outcome do you expect? You know, at the moment the Bali potential deliverables are three. Trade negotiations, trade facilitation negotiations that is, negotiations on agriculture, and a package for the poorer countries. It's called the SND and LDC issues. On the face of it, they balance each other. So to that extent, having taken the, on board the concerns of 
all members potentially, the least developed countries, agriculture is of interest to the developing world and trade facilitation benefits all and many studies have shown that in a WTO negotiation the maximum gains that would be delivered is from the trade facilitation negotiations. So it sort of addresses a lot of concerns, particularly from the perspective of the industrialized nations who face a lot of administrative and regulatory barriers when they try to export to developing countries, so even large emerging markets. So this is sort of a win-win. But ultimately, you know, uh, WTO negotiations and more importantly, any trade negotiation is in a large part a uh, function of political will. And it is lack of political will in light of a very weak economy in the last five, six years that has contributed in large part for the WTO negotiations dragging this time around. So, you know, how the TTIP negotiations progress in the next few months will give more insight, but at the moment, most are of the view that though this deliverable package is a good deal from for all uh, participants, uh, the essential political will is still missing.